Hi everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Benicia, this is the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast and today is a special episode all about my most recent trip to London where I visited no less than five yarn shops and I documented some of it, I took some clips, I took some notes, I made some purchases and so I wanted to make a dedicated video to that trip so that it would be separate from my usual podcast. If you're new to the channel, I have a usual podcast um, a knitting podcast where I, I follow the usual format. I publish about uh, every other week a uh, regular podcast episode, so you can check those out if you want. If you're a returning viewer, then <laughs> you already know that I do those kind of special videos all the time. And I have done some vlogs before, but this is kind of my... Well, I guess it's my second travel vlog because I went to the Scottish Borders for a yarn festival and I made a video about that, so you can check that out if travel vlogs are your type of thing. But today will be London specific. So yeah, that was a bit of a long intro just to say that this is a London yarn shop vlog. If you want to follow me on social media, you can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram at The Woolly Worker, same as here on YouTube. And if you are not subscribed or if you like this type of content, then please subscribe and like the video to let me know that you want to see more of those one-off videos. But if you're just here for the podcast, then yeah, just check the podcast out. I'm not still very sure on how best to format those videos or edit them. I know that there's a demand for them. People have always asked like, oh, please like take us with you and film London and, and let us know of, of the yarn shops. And I really want to give my thoughts out, but I can't do it justice. And I'm really not the type of very aesthetically pleasing, nice music, aesthetic clips, out and about lifestyle type. I'm still very much all about the knitting. So this video is going to be, I guess, more practical and informative than it will be artsy. I hope that's okay. So without further ado, let's just get straight into the topic and I will tell you all about my trip. So to give a bit of context, the trip was over three days. We departed on Friday morning and we came back on Monday afternoon. It was a three-day weekend. The UK had a bank holiday. Well, England did, Scotland didn't really, but I took the Monday off. And we traveled down, me and my boyfriend and his family to go see his brother that lives and works in London. And I had told my boyfriend that I would probably dedicate the Friday and the Saturday to visit the yarn shops and then we would spend the Sunday and the Monday together. So that is what we did. And on the Friday, it just so happened that it was a knit night that was organized by one of the yarn shops, my ivory room. So I signed up for that well in advance, talked to Valentina, the owner, and we were very excited that I was going to be there to experience it. So that was really nice to have this event that I was going to go to. The rest was up to me and the planning. So looking on Google Maps, seeing what yarn shops were close to each other within walking distance and through other people's recommendations, I made a little list of yarn shops that I wanted to visit, which included then um, in order, Beautiful Knitters, My Ivory Room, Loop, Wild and Woolly and Knitting with Attitude. I wish I could have done more, but I think that was already quite a lot. Before departing, I cast on an Oslo hat by Petit Knit, which I knit on in the train. I thought I would be doing much more knitting over the course of the weekend, but that didn't happen. And I ended up just folding the brim in half, which is what you're meant to do before continuing on the body of the hat. And that was all the knitting I did over the course of the weekend. It was very intensive, lots of walking, lots of commuting, but it's not really comfy to be knitting on the tube. So yeah, not that much knitting, but lots of visiting yarn shops. So on the Friday after the train, we arrived at the hotel and then I decided to go on a little adventure to Beautiful Knitters. It was a lovely little street with beautiful white flats and sort of black iron fences. It was really nice to walk in, but there weren't that many shops or restaurants or anything nearby. So I knew that this was going to be a very practical little trip towards Beautiful Knitters. And I entered a shop. It was my first yarn shop of the weekend. I was very excited. I spent around an hour there. It was um, around the end of the day, so before closing. And I thought maybe I'd be the only one, but there were quite a lot of people. At first I was alone and then lots of people started coming in. Um, the shop has knitting for Olive. 
on the wall, which was very nice to see in person all the colors. It was kind of surprising. I, I would see a color and I would think, oh, is that cream? But no, it was marzipan. Uh, so trying to guess what the colors were. And I was wearing my camisole number four and I saw one being knitted up as a sample hanging in the shop, which was very fun. I even said to the owner, uh, oh, look, I'm wearing the sample. And the owners, uh, the, the, the staff were really nice, asking me if I needed any help without being too overbearing. You know, they let me browse as much as I wanted. There was some uh, knitting for Olive, I said, and Cardiff Cashmere, which I was able to squish in person. There was some Angora from Fonti, which I had never felt before. It was very, very fluffy. I thought it'd be a bit too much. The hair were very long, so I didn't really want to buy it. I also was able to touch uh, Cardiff Cashmere brush mirror which is a mix of, I think, silk and cashmere, and that was really, really nice. So, um, yeah, one day when I have the money. They had lots of hand-dyed yarn from knitters, or from hand-dyers that I know, like Zakami, and also um, Camel Yarn, uh, which I, I was almost wanting to buy, but I kind of knew in this trip I wouldn't be buying any hand-dyed yarn, because I had just <laughs> taken a big inventory of the hand-dyed yarn I already own for my hand-dyed yarn video, and I was certain that I didn't need any more hand-dyed yarn. So it was a bit annoying, because in a way that would have been a nice souvenir yarn to buy at each of the yarn shops, but I was also okay with the idea of not spending money necessarily in, in all of the yarn shops. I don't need to make a purchase at all five. However, I did make one purchase in the Beautiful Knitters, which was this uh, sock measuring. It's not a blocker. It's uh, It gives you the UK, uh, the EU sizes for the foot of the wearer. So you put it on and then you can see when is a good time to stop so that the, just before the toe, and then if you know that your toe is going to be two centimeters, then you stop there. I'm doing a horrible job at explaining it, but it's kind of self-explanatory. And it's also got a little 10 centimeter measuring gauge here on the side, which can be really handy, as well as a needle gauge size. And yeah, I thought that I had seen those online before and I never took the plunge, but seeing it there in person in front of me, I thought that that would be a very useful tool to add to my knitting paranophilia collection. And that cost eight pounds. So that was all I purchased there. Then I moved on to my ivory room. The knit night was, I think, from seven to nine or 6.30 to 8.30, something like that. So I slowly made my way there. I had to take the tube all the way. It was quite out of the way, but I knew that in advance and it was absolutely worth it. That is the one thing that I will say is absolutely 100% worth going to my ivory room. If you're ever visiting London or if you live nearby, it's a lovely shop and the yarn is a must see in person you could spend hours there, so why not? And also the area, Chiswick, I'm gonna say it so wrong and I'm so sorry, but Chiswick, it's it's a really great area. It was so great that I went back again on the Sunday um, just to spend more time because it was so lovely and filled with nice little cafes and juices and, and bakeries and um, pizzerias. It was just so lovely and Valentina said that I could come in a bit early so we could have a chat. So I arrived there, uh, met Valentina and her husband who was here to help. We had some um, drinks in the sort of lounge part of the building. And then as more and more people were coming for the knit night, then we all went upstairs in the shop and the knit night started. And then I'm again ashamed to say that I did not get any knitting done at the knit night because I spent basically the two hours looking at all the yarn, squishing all the yarn and talking to people. Uh, but the, there were uh, five, six of us. I met uh, an Insta friend that I had made, Madeleine, in person, which was nice. And then I met some new friends that I um, have since talked more on Instagram. It was, it was really friendly. It all felt like we knew each other. I think a couple of them had already gone to the knit night, but for a lot of people, it was their first time coming. And Valentina was so welcoming and friendly that it just felt like we all knew each other. The yarn selection is really well curated. It's smaller compared to other shops, but you can tell that a lot of thought and effort has gone into selecting the best qualities of all the brands and to get a cohesive sort of shop that 
is eclectic and only takes the best out of everything. Something that Valentina said is that she tries not to select only the colors that she likes, but also knows a lot of people prefer. So for example, she doesn't like blues, but she knows a lot of people will like blue, so she does talk a lot of blue. And the brands I would say that she uh, has the most of are Gepard Garn, and then she also has some Rama. So if you're on the market for those yarns, definitely check her website out. She ships in the UK and I'm pretty sure internationally as well, but do check on the websites. All the link will be down in the description. And she had just received a really big order from Gepard. So she had some Pure Lana, Wild and Soft, Woolly, Woolia, like there's just a lot of different yarn qualities that they do. Also some cashmere lace and she just had those huge cardboard boxes and she said to us, you know, guys, I haven't even started like or organizing or cl cleaning them. So just open the boxes, tip them on the floor if you want and have fun. I'll put them all on the website later. So we had first dips, <laughs> which was really nice. You also get a little discount on the yarn if you buy it during the knit night. So uh, next time that she does it, you can get notified in her newsletter when the knit night happens. So make sure to be subscribed to her newsletter so you don't miss a net night. And there's also some drinks and pizza included, which was really generous. There was some brushed surrey from Olivia and Oliver Fiber, some boucle by Canard. And in the end, I ended up spending just shy of a hundred pounds because I bought a big sweater quantity of Gepard as well as two bowls of Pasquale Safira for the Tombow Tea by uh, Handmade by Florence. I just wanted it in the same colors that she did, but uh, only the white here cream was in stock, so I didn't get the other color of the stripe, but I will when it gets back in stock. So I bought those two bowls and it's heavenly. It absolutely is amazing. It's 75% uh, merino wool, 25% silk. So after you touch that, it's hard to go back to just normal merino because this is just extra, extra soft. And I could totally see myself doing more um, knits over the summer in 2024 that use this yarn because it would be economical if, if they were camisoles because you could probably just use two balls, but for t-shirts, you're gonna have to get four or five. But there was a lovely selection of colors and I'll keep an eye on the website for when more of them come back in stock. And then the other thing that I bought then was Gepard. Pure Lana in the colorway uh, Dusty Blue, I think. It's the color... Seven One Eight. And it's just this lovely, lovely, lovely ice blue. I think it's stunning. I was hesitating between this and something that looked quite similar. So I asked people around at the knit night, what do you think I should get for myself? And people helped me decide. Um, it's 50% wool, 50% alpaca. I got 10 balls because I wasn't sure what I wanted, but I thought I could have probably just gotten nine, but I thought 10 would give me the opportunity to perhaps do an oversized garment if I wanted to. So yeah, I got 10 and I'm really looking forward to using this. And it came in this lovely little tote bag from my ivory room that has a nice logo on top. Yeah, which is very sturdy and thick. So that will absolutely come in handy for storing yarn. <laughs> I mean, right now it's holding all my purchases from London. The last thing I got at my ivory room was a pair of C-knit circular needles. I got the 32 inches slash 80 centimeter two millimeter needle, which will be like, that's my usual sock needle size. And I've always wanted to try C-knit. I've been very influenced by Instagram and YouTube. They can be quite pricey. And I thought I'd want to try them on a fixed format first before ever splurging on a set. And I used, I do a lot of sock knitting, so, and I didn't have any wood sock knitting needles before, so that's very exciting, and I'm excited to, to use them. I'm going to be careful not to use that with a wool that's too wooly, and rather use it with a wool that I find slippery, so that it works well with the wood. They also have a rotating swivel that prevents twisting, allowing for smooth knitting.
Then uh, we stayed for even longer than what the net night was advertised for. We just, it was so fun. We just didn't want it to end. And then um, a girl from the net night and I took the same tube back into the town center because she had a train back to Cambridge. So people were coming from very far away. I mean, I was coming from Scotland. Um, people were coming from far away for, for this net night. So then I went back home and in the end, and my boyfriend was already in bed by the time I came back to the hotel. It was like 11 p.m. It was, it was a wild night of knitting. <laughs> so then on Saturday in the morning, I had my breakfast in a lovely little bakery right next to our hotel and I headed for my big yarn pilgrimage, as we called it. I had plans to go to Loop London because it was quite close. It was only a short bus ride away. Or actually, was it a walk? I think it was a walk. It was a half hour walk from my hotel. And then I thought I would go to the other side of London to do two other yarn shops. So I went to Uniqlo first, which is a um, Asian shop that sells basics and clothing wise, because someone at Knit Night recommended that I get some of the like undershirts that are thermal. So you wear them under your knits, for example, and they keep you your core very warm. They help your knits not being too itchy. Some of them had a scoop neckline. Some of them had a big high turtleneck. So I got a couple layers of that and I thought that would be so perfect to get ready for autumn and winter. And it was, it was right next to the London, uh, Loop London. So I highly recommend the Uniqlo shop if you are in the area because the uh, the prices are affordable and I had good recommendation that they're long lasting as well. So yeah, that was a nice little uh, impromptu stop. And then I went to Loop London, which was, oh, it was huge. People always talk about that shop as being like the staple because it's over, I want to say one floor, like it's two different floors or even three. I think you couldn't go to the, to the last layer, but you could definitely travel between two sh shop floors. And they had so much, it was just like every single nook and cranny and corner was filled with yarn that was almost like falling off the shelves. They had this huge wall of hand dyed from brands like La Bien Aimée. They had some very fancy brands like um, Woolfolk, which if I had the money, I would have bought because I felt it and I have not been able to stop thinking about it since. But you're talking over 20 pounds a ball and the yardage is tiny and they're like 25 gram balls or 50 grams. So yeah, I just couldn't justify a sweater quantity of wool folk, any of their qualities. I loved all of them. So I didn't buy that. They had a lot of Isiger, um, a lot of a lot of hand dyed, like I said, and um, some Camarosa, some American brands like Brooklyn Tweed or Spin Cycle, which again, I was shocked at seeing how small the Spin Cycle uh, skins were. They're 50 grams, I believe, for the price of a fingering um, 100 grams kind. So that was, that, was, that, was a lot, that was a lot and I didn't get any, but it was nice to see it in person to see what the fuss was all about. The staff was very much hands off because the shop was so, so, so busy. There were so many customers. So if you wanted help, you probably would have to go and ask the staff for help. Um, but they weren't necessarily coming to you to talk to you, which I personally preferred because I just wanted to do my own thing. But if if you prefer someone who's more hands on, then yeah. There were lots of little accessories, like a whole wall of buttons, scissors, embroidery thread, um, accessories. I guess what was hard is, you know, when you're used to buying yarn online and you have the website where everything is sorted by brand or weight or type, it's obvious where everything is. Whereas in person, in the shop, it was a little overwhelming and you wouldn't necessarily know where things were. So um, I'm pretty sure that the yarn weights were separated by floor. So you had like all the big and chunky in one and then all the DK and fingering in the other, if I remember correctly. I was wearing my home camisole by Kadri that day and someone commented on it saying, I think I've knitted that home camisole and, and we talked a bit about it. And um, so that was quite nice. But apart from that, I didn't really talk to anyone during that visit and I also didn't buy anything. But I'd highly recommend that shop if you were in the market for I guess hand dyed because they had the biggest selection. So they had Ching Fiber and La Bien Aimée, Life in the Long Grass, Lichen and Lace, Eden Cottage Yarn, which I didn't know about before, but I really liked how it looked. 
there were some quite interesting fiber blends as well that some hand dyers had so that was nice to squish it and feel it in real uh in real life for example ching fiber had a base that was uh, cashmere and silk and something and it was just like amazing to feel it they had lots of samples they had the scout shawl by florence sperling which was really cool to see in person um just everything was hanging and it can be very visually overstimulating to see that much knitting related content and all the colors and all the textures so yeah it can be very visually busy and you definitely need to give yourself time like if you're only in the area for 20 minutes i don't think 20 minutes would be enough to really take it all in what that shop has to offer it was actually so busy that sometimes you had to wait behind someone to go see what they were seeing the hand dyed wall of yarn was definitely no the wall of hand dyed yarn was definitely uh, the attraction that lots of people just like stood in front of for so long, which is understandable. And if you wanted to go and like touch the stuff that was underneath like that person, obviously like that's not very nice, so just wait. Um, and then while you were looking at stuff, you knew that there were people behind you who were looking to like waiting to look. So maybe that was also putting a bit of pressure. But I would say definitely go there if you have a project in mind, because I didn't and I didn't end up leaving with anything because like because there were so many opportunities or possibilities it just kind of stopped me and like put a block to my creativity or ideas also there was no wi-fi in that shop uh, and neither did my ivory room or beautiful knitters and i don't have 4g on my phone so i always rely on wi-fi being offered at places which i'm not entitled to or i don't expect it but i'm always positively surprised when it is offered so something to keep in mind if like me you rely on public wi-fi then none of those yarn shops had it which puts a very big barrier to researching projects on Ravelry and I think it's something that yarn shops should maybe work towards uh, offering to customers to facilitate purchases then after that I traveled to Wild and Woolly which was uh, much further and so I had to take a couple buses for that it was a less nice area compared to Chiswick I didn't necessarily want to spend my afternoon there I just like I didn't feel attracted to it I just thought I'd get in get out of the yarn shops then go back to the town center and do other things so um, it was a, an easy access from loop so I'd recommend just taking the bus from there it was a very very nice little shop um, it was Bronte who was there that day. I think the shop is owned by Anna and Bronte is there on Instagram. I was following her before. So when I when I came in, I um, I think I told her like, oh yeah, like I know you from Instagram, <laughs> uh, just to get it out there, get the awkwardness out of the way. And yeah, I really like her style. She knits with a lot of woolly wools, which are offered in the shop. So she's like the sample knitter. And it's kind of nice to have that guarantee that if, someone is actually using that wool that the yarn shop offers then it's a good review for it you know they only stock what they would personally knit with which i think is just the, the best most honest review my ivory room does that as well valentina if you follow her on instagram you'll see that she's always knitting with gepard garns uh, which is really it's it's really nice to see her using her own products so Wild and Woolly had this big wall that was very well organized by uh, weights of yarn and brands. So you had quite a lot of John Arben, for example, some Derara Natura, and just lots of woolly wools. Some of them scratchier than others. Lots of Retro Zaria, absolutely. She had Saona uh, from Wool Dreamers, as well as another one from Wool Dreamers. They had lots of notions as well, and I made quite a lot of purchases of the little notions because I just couldn't stop looking. They also had a really nice selection of knitting books, which I spent a lot of time just looking at all the books. And I was alone at first for a while and then someone else came in and uh, Bronte clearly knew her, like it was a regular customer, I guess. And then she had, uh, she wanted to help, she wanted help with her knitting pattern. So Bronte was helping with that. So it was really nice. And the things I got there were some buttons they're just some nice little wooden ones that i think are going to be very nice for cardigans and then i got 
this little thing, which is kind of like a, a magic tool that you can use for a bunch of things. So it's, it can be a cable needle, a stitch holder, a stitch marker, a dropped stitch fixer, or a seam baster. They're made in Vermont. So this is kind of like elastic, or well not elastic, but like a, a cable that you can bend and it stays into shape. And then the needle, I think we even tried it in person through like the needle gauge. And we realized that it was pretty much three millimeter or something like that. So yeah, I think that'll be very handy to have in my little like notion pouch that I take when I'm on the go. Then I also bought a, a felting needle as well as a handle for it. So this is the, the felting needle. And I thought that that could be really handy for when I want to split slice split splice woolly wools together and um, so like felting the ends of the wool instead of joining them the way that like leaves tails and also just in case I ever wanted to try felting I thought why not have the tool already and it wasn't too expensive either so those were nice little purchases the other things that I got at uh, wild and woolly then were some John Arban yarns. So these are the colors that I picked. Uh, one is called Babel Bug, I think. And yeah, this one. And then this one is called Quick Beam. And I got those to make the new design by Stone Knits, which is like the toadstool socks, because I just like, I saw the photo of her like teasing it and I just fell in love with it. And I already had two of the, the four colors. I already had the mizzle, which is a light gray, and the drumble, which is the yellow. So I only had to buy those two. And yeah, I was really happy. Uh, this shade is very interesting. It's kind of showing true to color here on camera. It's kind of a purple, kind of a brown, depending on the lighting. And it's a very, very interesting shade. The thing with John Arban is that all the shades look so good together no matter what shade you pick, and I'm really bad at picking colors, like myself, I always need someone to tell me what to do. And I feel like I could confidently put a three or four color palette by just picking like the Exmoor sock base yarns, because it would be really, really hard to go wrong with them. They just look so good. So I got these and I'm really happy. I have bought a lot of John Arban Exmoor sock yarns. And I've yet to actually net up with any of them, but this has motivated me, I say, as I'm not sure whether I will actually make those socks. I do want to. Um, I really want to try that yarn because I, I love everything about it, except that I haven't knitted with it yet, so I don't know if I love everything about it. So yeah, I need to use this yarn. Then the other thing that I got was this skein that was on offer. It's really big. This is Wool Dreamers um, de Hesa de Barrera, which is a, a merino from Spain. And the whole label is in Spanish, which is not my forte. <laughs> That's Italian. Uh, anyway, this is a DK way, I would say. And I haven't seen that many people use it on Instagram or Ravelry, but I just really, really liked the color. And I thought that once kind of DK would either get me like a nice hat or a little cowl or more likely a stripe in a sweater down the line. So most realistically, this is going to end up being a stripe in a sweater. And it's really nice and soft. Well, it's kind of like, it's not like silky soft. It's like dry soft, maybe kind of like heavy merino from Knitting for Olive if you've tried that. So quite happy with that. And then lastly, there also was a little bargains box at Wild and Woolly, which is made from donations of people who are de-stashing. And then uh, you pay two pounds for each and every skein of yarn that's in that box. So um, a couple of us in the shop were just like going at it, looking at all the yarns. There were some really nice bargains, like yarn from Rowan that you wouldn't have found for that cheap. And then there were some things like drops, which maybe you could have found as cheap. And I just got a ball of Jameson Shetland Spin Rift in the color Ivory, because I just know that I use that yarn a lot in color work and an ivory color of white would come in very handy down the line. So I just thought I'd get that as a little souvenir of that bargains box. So overall, I spent £49 at Wild and Woolly, which for the amount of items I've bought, I'm not mad about. I think that's really good. And 
the other yarn they have is raw work they have i think both the sport and the dk if i'm not mistaken and they also have the undyed and the dyed and it's a really nice yarn i really really recommend it and it is more pricey so it's definitely something that if you ever find on sale and wild and woolly does have sales so also i recommend subscribing to their newsletter to keep an eye on that if raw work goes on sale i'd recommend buying raw work and then the last stop that I went to was knit with attitude there was actually a bus that went straight there so I took it I told everyone every yarn shop I told them that I was on a big yarn pilgrimage and that like I told them what I had gone to and what were my next stops so I went to knit with attitude the staff was really really lovely and friendly uh, happy to have a chat they were kind of chatting with each other but like loudly so like you could sort of participate in their conversation or I wildly misread that social cue uh, they had a lot of the fiber company, which I love. It's a brand that does a lot of interesting yarn blends. So it was really nice to go touch that in person before buying it online. They had number four, the yarn brand, I think, or the quality, which I didn't know before, but I really liked. Priscelli that I liked. They also had a lot of John Arben, which um, is also a must see in person because they're fibers are dyed before being spun if I understand correctly which then when you spin a lot of those different colors together it just gives such a richness and depth to the strand of yarn because there's so much happening even though the yarn from far away gives you an overall sentiment of a color like for example brown when you look deeper into it you can see that it has reds and blues and yellows who then all together give that impression of a brown so I saw some of the John Arben colorways like quench in person and I was just like mesmerized by like, you know, when you like, when you put the yarn in different lights and you look at it, it was just fantastic. The lighting was really good in the shop. There was a couch as well, if you were feeling tired or just to put your bag down like I did. They also had quite a lot of books there and magazines as well as a lot of samples. I really like it when shops have samples, obviously, because then you get to touch the yarn but also have an idea of the drape of the fabric sometimes the shops will put the size needle that they knitted it at but sometimes they don't usually they will tell you what the pattern is or the, who the designer is but yeah i think that's it for my impressions of all those shops i hope that that was a good way of giving you the general idea of what each shop's ethos is and like the vibe of the shop and what you can expect to see when you go there hopefully the clips on the camera video here will have helped as well more than words can convey you can definitely get more of an idea of the shops when you visit their websites which like i said will be down below in the description but overall i'm i'm super chuffed that i got to visit all of those shops i would say that if i had less time what i would have done is i would have just gone to my ivory room and wild and woolly they were my personal favorites and i feel like loop was kind of a nice like must see in terms of like experience um but i ended up being so overwhelmed that i didn't feel the need to buy anything because i could have just gotten it online whereas the other ones i was really happy for the experience of like talking to the staff and squishing the yarn in person etc because they had more obscure yarns so i really am happy with my itinerary if you are in london for two or three days and you want to do what i did then yeah it's doable it's feasible you will be a bit tired by the end of it um, and i definitely don't recommend buying something in every shop because the five shops would add up quite quickly but i'm happy with my haul of only having bought at two shops if you don't count um the little sock measure um, on Saturday night with my boyfriend we went to see Hamilton at the Victoria Palace Theatre that was really really nice um, our seats were great the singing acting performing was amazing and we had such a good night we had already seen it in London last year so it was nice to go and see it again and we didn't do any other shows in London but um, yeah, it's something that we definitely want to take advantage of next time that we go. But I'm not in a rush to come back to London because it is a very busy city and it's quite far away from where we are. It took five hours to come back. And 
it left us quite tired, hence me filming this video a bit later than I wanted to, and it might be why I forgot some things, so I apologize in advance if this is less detailed than you would have wanted a travel vlog to be. If you live in London, or you have been, and you have been to those yarn shops, I'd be really curious to see if you have the same feelings as me or if I didn't say anything that you thought I should have said. Um, so let me know if you visited any of those shops and your impressions are different or the same. I'd love to, to know that. But I think that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and for your continuous support as always. It's really nice to read the comments and talk to you guys on Instagram and everything. So yeah, uh, I'll see you all very soon for a future normal podcast episode or another one-off video who knows what's next but i'll see you all next time bye take care